Happy Friday, everybody. Uh, this is Robert. Welcome back to my channel, Barter Hordes, uh, here to do a Friday Reads. Um, I basically just want to cover two things this week. One is an update on the read-alongs that we have scheduled. As some of you may know from my video last week, I am starting four different read-alongs each month, um, one per week. And the first one is based on the 100 Essential Novels scratch-off poster published by Pop Chart Labs. Um, the second one is just 100 great books, many of which I used in my teaching days. The third is a long list of 20th century backlist novels. And then the fourth is a nonfiction uh, group. I'm not actually working from a set list there. I'm just adding to the list each month. Uh, we start on this coming Monday. The first group will be the 100 Essential Novels group. Uh, we'll be starting with Thomas Pynchon's 1966 novel, The Crying of Lot 49. So we start reading that on Monday, uh, read it through Saturday, however long it takes you. It's a very short book. And then on that Sunday, I'll post my reaction video. And if you're following along and you have a BookTube channel, I welcome you to post your own videos that Sunday as well or comment on everybody else's. I have also opened a Goodreads group. I've never done that before, so bear with me if I don't get the settings right on the group right away. But there is a, a Goodreads group that's open as well. I will link that in the description box. I will also link uh, the page on my website where I've posted the four lists of books and I will keep currently uh, the dates for each of the four groups so you'll know what the dates are for any specific book and what book it is that's coming up. Feel free to jump in and jump out of those discussions as you will. Um, you're not signing up for anything, you're not committing to anything, but if you want to read along one of those four books each month, or all four books each month, that's completely up to you. I'd love to have your company. Um, I think that's about all I have to say. We start on Monday and we'll see how this goes. The only other thing I wanted to go over today was a little bit of my reading this week. It's been a, it's been a good reading week for me. Um, as of tonight, I will have finished three books this week, which is a little more than I usually read. Uh, the first one is Miss Boston and Miss Hargreaves by Rachel Malik, and that is actually one of the six titles that has been shortlisted for the Walter Scott Prize for Historical Fiction. Uh, I'm not terribly concerned about who wins the prize, but I am interested in historical fiction enough that I'm reading through the six titles. I had already read Manhattan Beach, so this is the second of the six for me. Um, it's an interesting story in that it's, it's set at least initially around World War II years, but it's not really a World War II story. It is um, about a woman whose sisters have left the family farm because they've gotten married. Her brothers have died in the war. Uh, she is the only child left to keep this farm running, but she can't do it by herself. So she is sent a land girl. Uh, it's like an organization of volunteers they get assigned to different properties to help out in the absence of all the male farm workers who are fighting overseas. And so Miss Boston gets assigned to her Miss Hargreaves and that starts a 20 some odd year uh, relationship between these two women. They grow very close over the years. Although Miss Boston is, is a very private person, she really grows to depend on Miss Hargreaves. What makes this story unique, but I think it also might hurt the book a little bit, is that a lot of this is based on the real life story of the author's grandmother. Miss Hargreaves is the author's grandmother. And she has an interesting backstory in that she um, left her husband and children in Manchester. Um, abandoned them essentially because her husband was a gambler and she just couldn't take it anymore and so she farmed out her children to relatives and she disappeared and that's what made her join the land girls and end up working with Miss Boston but the author keeps trying to bring these this backstory which is an important story but it's not something that's really all that much of a mystery and it's not really 
that important to the story that Rachel Malik wants to tell in this book, which is the relationship between these two women over the 20 years and the legal battle that they have in some instances. But she keeps trying to bring this backstory in and she does it in kind of a very indirect, very unclear, vague way. And for me, it was just a distraction. I almost wish she had just told us the backstory in a couple of paragraphs and then referred to it whenever she needed to because it really doesn't affect the contemporary story between Miss Boston and Miss Hargreaves. Uh, I won't tell you more than that. There is a mystery element to this story uh, and there's a twist at the end and everything else and it's that part is interesting. I enjoyed the present tense part of the narrative. I didn't enjoy all the back back and forth to her backstory, which I thought was superfluous. I think it may be one of those things where it was a part of the actual Miss Hargreaves story and the author felt compelled to bring it in to try to explain that character's nature, but I just don't think it was really all that helpful to the contemporary story. So it was okay. I, I enjoyed reading it. I read it pretty quickly. Uh, I don't see it as winning any major prizes. Uh, it is a debut novel, I think. Um, and so I'd be interested to see what Rachel Malik does in another novel where she's not dealing with a personal family story, whether that changes the way she structures her narrative. And the rest of the week has been devoted to Madeline Miller's books. Uh, the first of her books came out, I think, some five years ago, um, The Song of Achilles. Uh, and I read that early in the week, and it is my favorite book so far of 2018. It's early. It's still early in May, but so far, and I've read some good books this year, um, it is my favorite read. It is the retelling of the Achilles story from Homer's The Iliad, um, but she changes some things from a lot of the, a lot of the, the accounts of Achilles' life, um, and she, she tells it through the first person narrative of Patroclus, which is in some versions Achilles' cousin. In this version, they're not related at all. Patroclus was exiled from his own family's home because he accidentally killed another boy. And so he's exiled to the kingdom where Achilles is growing up. And so they end up growing up together as teenagers and become lovers. Um, he's He is Achilles' um, primary companion. So he's almost treated as a brother. And they go off to the, the Trojan War. Uh, I, I rewatched the movie Troy uh, last night or the night before, and it's interesting and it's, it's fun, but they've compressed what is essentially a 10 year war into about a month's worth of action and they, they've changed enough things to make it cinematic. It was fun to watch, but I much preferred uh, reading this particular take on it. Um, it. She does a really good job handling all the different characters because there are a ton of people and a ton, a ton of names in these myths to keep track of and I think that's one of the biggest complaints students have when they try to read Homer is that they can't keep any of the storylines straight. Um, Madeline Miller manages to take just what she needs from each of these other lines and makes them work and you really are caught up in the story of Achilles and Patroclus and this particular uh, line of um, history that goes through the 10 years of the Trojan War. And I just think it's a beautifully written book. I just, I was, I was captivated. I, I was stunned by it. Even knowing what was going to happen, it's like reading, you know, a cliffhanger. It is a page turner. And so I went on and I picked up her new book as well, which just came out, which is Circe. Um, and it is, I'm almost... I'd say I'm probably three quarters of the way finished. I'll probably finish that one tonight. And it is very much the same type of book in the sense that she's telling a story from Homer, um, but she's focusing on a minor character in Homer's tale. She's focusing on the, the goddess Circe, who's a goddess without a lot of powers, at least initially. She is the daughter of Helios. She was kind of the forgotten stepchild of the royal household. Uh, they couldn't marry her off. Nobody wanted her. Her voice was offensive to them because her voice is actually the voice of a mortal, but to them it sounds terrible. Um, but then she finds out that she can use uh, natural flowers and herbs to 
transfigure things and she ends up changing one of the real bitchy characters at court, Scylla. She changes her into the six-headed monster that she becomes in Homer's Odyssey. Um, and when she admits to it and expects to be punished, no one believes her. And so she's just terribly offended by this until finally her brother admits that he too has these kind of magical powers. Uh, the words they use for her are sometimes translated as witch, uh, but often it's more talking about the herbs and stuff that she uses. So it's more of a natural witchcraft. It's not waving a wand around. And so the whole book is about Circe. Once she's banished to this island for what she's done to Scylla, uh, it's about the people who end up on her island, about the interactions with the people that she meets and the gods that she meets who come to her island. Since she is exiled, she can't leave without uh, Zeus's permission or without her father's permission. So she meets people like Daedalus comes to her island. Eventually, Odysseus comes to her island. Uh, the god Hermes comes to her island and is her first lover. And so it's really her story in exile and with the people who come to meet her. Uh, it's every bit as good as the Song of Achilles, although I don't personally know the mythology in Circe's story nearly as well as I knew the Iliad, and so I am not as clear with some of the different histories. Uh, but it's getting better the further I get into the book. It's getting better and better and better, so I'm really enjoying that, and I'll be finishing that probably tonight or tomorrow morning. So it's been a good week. Three books for me in a week is pretty good. Um, that's about it for me here. If you have any questions about the read-alongs, please drop me a comment. Uh, I'd be glad to explain those. Like I said, the links will be in the description box. Um, so my, my schedule for videos is going to be kind of fixed in future weeks. Um, what I plan to do is I will do a tag video on Tuesday. I will continue doing my independent bookseller recommendations on Wednesdays. I will do Friday reads like I've done the last couple of weeks and then on Sundays I will post my reaction video for that week's read-along. So I'm looking at four videos a week but I'm hoping to keep them all relatively brief. Uh, if I can do that I think it'll be manageable. I don't spend a lot of time as some of you have noticed. I don't spend a lot of time editing uh, other than throwing pictures in. Um, if I screw up something, it just stays screwed up for all posterity. And so I'm going to try to keep my videos relatively brief doing that. And it doesn't take me terribly long to do the editing process. I am experimenting today with a, a brand new microphone. I got a new camera about two or three weeks ago. And I love the camera. It's the, uh, the Canon PowerShot something or other. It's got like 19 names. I don't know. But it doesn't have a port for a microphone. And I had been using a lapel mic. Um, which was working just fine uh, when I was filming with my, iP uh, my iPod, my iPad. I don't have an iPod anymore. Those things finally died. Um, but now what I'm having to do, because the mic on the camera picks up tons of wind noise, is I've been having to tape the audio separately on just an audio recording on my iPhone using my microphone and then having to sync that soundtrack with the video track when I go into iMovie. And I'm not very technologically proficient on all this stuff, so that's, that's been a learning curve. But I'm trying a new microphone because I wasn't really happy with the lapel microphone. Um, and it's a microphone that attaches right to my iPhone. And I have no idea. It's kind of breezy today. I have no idea if this is even recording clearly or not. So we'll find out when I get inside and, and try to edit. Uh, but that's all that's going on for me. I hope you all have a great weekend. You won't hear from me again until Tuesday, uh, but don't forget that we do start reading Monday for the first of the readathons, and that's on Thomas Pynchon's The Crying of Lot 49, and I'll talk to you again next week. Bye.